Welcome back everyone, I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. Today we're talking about organometallic reagents in lesson 5.3. In our last lesson we learned how to prepare organolithium reagents, Grignard reagents, and Gilman reagents, and we talked about the very first of these reactions that Gilman reagents can do to substitute a bromine on an alkyl group. We also learned that this is not a simple SN2 reaction. We talked about how the stereo retention is one piece of evidence to support the fact this is not a simple SN2 reaction. Now we're going to see a couple additional pieces of evidence that when a Gilman reagent reacts with a compound with a leaving group, it's not a simple SN2 reaction. For example, if I try to do an SN2 reaction on this compound, I see that my leaving group is attached to an sp2 hybridized carbon. Well, the SN2 reaction doesn't work on sp2 hybridized carbons, it only works on sp3 hybridized carbons. But when I take the two methyl groups on the copper in this Gilman reagent, I can actually get replacement of that leaving group with the methyl group, this methyl group coming from the Gilman reagent. This also works on aromatic rings. So here's an iodine attached to benzene. And if I react this with a Gilman reagent, I will be able to get a methyl group attached to the benzene ring. It turns out the Gilman reagent is quite versatile. The Gilman reagent can also replace a leaving group that is adjacent to an alkene. And we would expect the methyl group to go where that leaving group is. What if we consider one specific stereoisomer? Well, the Gilman reagent does the substitution with stereoretention, not what the SN2 reaction does. We'd get the same configuration there. Now, we're going to see that some organometallic reagents can react with the carbonyl C double bond O functionality. But the Gilman reagent, again, just replaces the leaving group with whatever R group is here. Here again at the methyl groups, we would get this ketone with an extended chain. We could have made this ketone chain on this side any length we'd wanted to by adding ethyl, methyl, butyl, or whatever length of chain to our Gilman reagent to start with. If we think back to what we learned about in lesson 2.15 about ring opening of epoxides, we kind of already know that a nucleophile can attack the less substituted side of the epoxide ring. In some cases, if you have acidic conditions, you'll attack the more substituted side. But remember, organometallics are strong bases. So in the case shown here, this methyl group could have come from a Grignard reagent or from an organolithium reagent, as indicated here. And we'd open the ring up to make the initial anion. Now this anionic species is not yet the final product. We need to protonate this oxygen. However, you can't add acid, of course, at the same time as you have added your organometallic species where they'll react with one another. So in a second step, you need to add your acid. This will finally get you to your protonation of that alkoxide in the last step. It will lead to a neutral alcohol species. Now a couple things worth pointing out here. This step is an SN2-like step, so we have to push these groups up and invert the configuration here. It's not a chiral center, so it doesn't matter in this particular case, but it's worth noting. The other thing is that this is a chiral center, and we didn't change any of the bonds to that carbon. So we retain the configuration there, kind of like we discussed in our normal epoxide lesson. So in the notes part of this page, if you're following along with the printed notes, you might see the problem written out like this, where it specifies the two steps you need to get to the neutral product. In this case, I've changed this to an ethyl group, and you'd say, well, the ethyl group is going to attack the less substituted side. It will push the O up like that. It won't change the configuration there. In step two, we'll protonate, and we get this final product. Another thing mentioned in the reading for this lesson is that if I take an R minus group derived either from an organolithium or a Grignard reagent, but not a Gilman reagent, I can get those anions to react with a carbonyl species like a ketone or aldehyde. This is first a simple nucleophilic addition step. That gets me to this intermediate species after step one. In step two, I have added an acid, and of course an acid will protonate an alkoxide, and the net result is that I get an alcohol from either a ketone or an aldehyde is where these were. I had mentioned that Gilman reagents are good at replacing leaving groups and are less reactive than organolithium or Grignard reagents. So these type of reactions do not work if you try to use an R group from a Gilman reagent. 